The final episode in The Fate of Atlantis is here, with Alexios learning about his destiny and how Atlantis fell. The main campaign does offer some great revelations and fills in the gaps left behind by the core campaign, but it doesn't share the same quality when it's compared to Lila's adventure. Judgment of Atlantis is an excellent conclusion to this three-part campaign with some powerful weapons available to the player by the end. Judgment of Atlantis takes place after the events of Torment of Hades. Poseidon has welcomed Alexios into the realm and made him into his champion, allowing Alexios to make decisions on Poseidon's behalf. As you might expect, the issue, who are the gods of this realm, are not too happy with this decision, but it also happens that Alexios is needed in Atlantis in order to maintain order of the city. Quickly you learn about the politics of Atlantis, having the issue fight among one another and there is a war between humans and issue Bruin. These conflicts allow for open-ended outcomes, with Alexios determining the fate of certain individuals based on his actions within certain missions that manifest in later quests. Decisions made in the previous episodes do not manifest here, which is quite disappointing, but the varied options available in Judgment of Atlantis do encourage replaying the episode for different results, but make sure you save beforehand as the auto-save system is unforgivable here. Back so soon? While Alexios' campaign provides answers to lingering questions that existed since the beginning of this three-part expansion with great revelations into the issue and the events leading up to the finale, Lila's events are not as thrilling. Taking a massive nosedive, the finale for Lila's campaign is underwhelming and disappointing. This has been an ongoing problem with the Assassin's Creed franchise, with modern events always being underwhelming due to lackluster information and leaving the player with very more questions than answers. And with Judgment of Atlantis, it's shown that Ubisoft's developers still don't take the modern events as seriously as they should. The mission structure has remained largely unchanged. If you played through the main campaign or Legacy of the First Blade, you'll know what to expect. You'll clear bases and obtain key items. But thankfully, exploring Atlantis is a lot of fun. The world is mostly made of one large area in the shape of a circle. It complements the tone of the entire episode and the narrative as this pristine utopia with overwhelming wealth. But as you play through the narrative, you begin to see that all the corruption is underneath the surface. The area is lacking in fast travel points and walking around with your horse is a bit harder since most of the streets are narrow. Also while the verticality makes the city look fantastic, be prepared to climb through a lot of areas in order to reach certain paths. Unlike Torment of Hades or Fields of Elysium, there are plenty of new weapons and three new skills to obtain. The legendary weapons in particular, which there are three of them, are extremely powerful against the enemies within all three episodes. Obtaining one of them could easily turn all the fights in this episode in your favor. Best of all is that you can upgrade each of these weapons into three categories, but there is no bow, instead you get only three melee weapons which seems a bit strange. One of the biggest disappointments of Judgment of Atlantis is the boss fights. Unlike the previous episodes which had you find a wide array of different enemies, especially Torment of Hades, there's only one fight that stands out and it's towards the end. For the most part you'll engage in the same Arkan type enemy over and over again, all of them sporting the same fighting technique, same weapon, but just with a different name. You'll just have to pummel them into the ground seeing that they're just large bullet sponge like enemies. Another annoyance is a new level gating technique called Knowledge. Like in previous episodes, Knowledge serves as a new experience system that the player must obtain in order to open certain areas. Barriers block these areas unless you obtain enough knowledge in order to get through these barriers. And you'll have to dedicate, for me personally, it was about an hour, but the average player may have to dedicate about 2-3 to three hours seeing that most of these knowledge pillars are guarded by high level enemies. Judgment of Atlantis is a great conclusion for the expansion of the fate of Atlantis. However, it's only great for Alexios. You'll learn some major information, gain new powerful items, and face against an array of unique bosses by the end of this large expansion. 
It's just unfortunate that Lila's story, after having such a positive turn in the previous two episodes, takes a massive nosedive by the end of Judgment of Atlantis.